Hello and welcome back. Now this is the fourth session on this blinking rays project. In this session, we are now going to create the second animation of the BG2 so that both moves together and the next thing that we are going to do is we have to animate the collider. So, these two parts we are going to do it here and when you are doing it, I want you to understand the logic as you build the game. If you remember in the very first game when we uh, in the second game when we created the flappy bird, you remember how we animated the background. So, we did not animate two backgrounds separately, we combined it together and we put it into a null object and we animated the null object you can apply the same concept here also. So, instead of animating BG1 and BG2 separately, if I put both of them in one null object in one animation, I can finish it off. So, if you want, you can try this or else let us continue with our old logic. Although it is not very efficient, we can fine tune it. This is called as fine tuning of a game or fine tuning of a program. You can improve it by reducing the number of lines of codes. So, now today we shall continue with our project and we are now going to make the animation of the second background and the collider. Okay, now coming back to Spark AR Studio, I am going to click open and I will going to open the last version uh, 5 that is we had saved it as version 3. Okay, so I will select this version 3 file and I will click open. Okay, this is open now, I will just maximize the screen. I will go to file and first I am going to click on save as and I am going to now in the three blinking grace uh, folder, I am going to now name this as version 4 and I will click save so that this version 4 is saved. Okay, So, maintain this version as you work on it. Now, the next thing here is what I want is, so now we are going to now continue with our animation job. So, previous session we had and I will just bring the mouse in between here and I will increase the size and in the previous with middle mouse I will pan it and you can see we had added one transition for BG1. Now, in this session we have to add transition for BG2 that also has to start moving. So, for this BG2 we are going to again use the same logic. Now, again loop animation I did not add it again. I will use the same loop animation because both will be controlled by the same speed and the animation everything is controlled by the same loop. So, that is why I will come to add patch here and I am going to add the transition patch and one I will click on add patch. So, when I click on add patch I got this transition here. Now, only thing is now this transition has to be applied to BG2. So, I will come here and I will select BG2. And the first thing I want is I will set its initial position. So, I will copy the x value here 1000, I will press control C to copy and in transition I will come to start and paste it. Then I will its y value is minus 178, okay. I will just copy this and I will come here in start and paste it and z value is 0, keep it 0 here also and here also 0. And now, as I told again for this BG2, it is not going to move in z axis, it is not going to move in y axis. I want it to move only in x axis. So, coming back to transition here, I will copy the y value of z uh, this and paste here also. So, that y value would not change and even z value I will set it to 0 here. So, start and end y value start and end z value are the same it is not going to get animated i want it to get animated only along the x axis so for this let us understand how much we have to move say for example in the case of bg1 you can see the starting position was 200 and end position we had given was minus 600 so the other background should also move at the same speed means this is moving 200 minus 800 is minus 600 or minus 600 plus 800 is 200. So, I have moved the first BG1 by 800 units in the negative way and I will apply the same logic here. So, 1000 minus 800 is 
200. So, I will set its position to 200 and here in the second case again for BG2 I will come over here, I will click on the position, add the position tab and I am going to drag this and connect it. Now, let us go to file, choose save, reset the game. Now, come back here and click on simulate touch if it is not on and if you click it, oh there is some error. Uh, why are we getting the gap? See, there is some gap is coming. Okay, okay. So, the BG2 is not still moving. Okay. See, these are the kind of bugs that gets generated. Why is it is not moving? Can anyone guess why it is not moving? Well, the reason is we created the transition. I will sw switch uh, stop this. I will now, I, I cre created the transition, we connected it to BG2, but we have not applied the loop animation at all here. So, I have to drag this loop animation and connect it here and now, if I tap it, see the animation is working fine. So, if there is any, even if you miss one small bracket or one colon, the entire program is not going to work. This is called as debugging. So, you should carefully observe where you are going wrong. Okay. So, now this animation is working perfectly fine. So, we have made the background running. So, our first target of making the background move is achieved. But only thing is when you are working in this patch editor, see this patch editor as we build it becomes very, very huge and here as you can see this loop animation timeline bg1 all this component does one job that is what it is doing it is animating the background so what i will now do is i will click here and add a box and i will select this loop animation transition and bg1 transition and bg2 i will select this entire section i will right click and choose group and now see the entire thing got converted into a group and I am going to call this as bg underscore animation. So, now in this way you can organize your code very well. This entire thing is now a function. This entire bg animation is a function and if I click on this, this function will open and you can see this function has an input. So, you have an input here and it is going to perform a task. Now, the, you are giving an input and that input is animating it. So, if you just remember in our previous uh, class also, I will come back to main here. In Flappy Bird also, we used a ready made group for the Flappy Bird for the entire game to run. We used the Flappy Bird, the entire Flappy Bird group uh, uh, that uh, entire thing was converted into one function and it was given to you as one single component. So, same way now entire BG animation we converted it into one function. Now, the next thing is the background is moving, I will stop the animation here, I will stop the simulate touch, I will reset the game and now the next thing is I want this obstacle to move. Okay. So, for this the first thing is I see this obstacle and player to be very small compared to the size. So, I will select the player first and I will increase his scale from 1000 to 1400, press tab and in the next field also type 1400 and z is not required, but I will simply type 1400 and press enter. So, now what happened was this player has become slightly bigger and the obstacle collider instead of 600, I will change its value to 1000, 1000 and 1000. I have made both a little bigger and now I want this collider to move, but before moving it, the collider will not be on the screen when the game starts. So, initially I will just zoom here and I am going to hold this along the x axis here and I am going to move it to left that so that it is just outside the screen. And once I move it outside the screen, if you see the value here, approximately if I move it, move it by 250 units, you can see the obstacle is out of the screen. So, after this, 
Now let us apply the animation using the same logic like before. So the first component we add for animation is loop animation. I will type loop. I will select loop animation and I am going to add the patch. So loop animation is added. So after this I will again click on add patch and I am going to add transition. I will select transition and I will click add patch and I have to connect this loop animation to this transition and then here I have to select the collider and for the collider the initial x value is 250. I select it press control plus c come here and paste control v. This is the start position and for the y value I it is minus 290. So, it is set to minus 290 and I will copy this value and I will come to y and paste it. I will paste the same value even for end because we are not going to move this collider in y value. So, I am going to set its start and end value to the same and similarly now I will select the z value which is 0 and here also I will set the z value to 0 both start and end and only place where we are going to move it is in the x value. And now you apply the mathematics and see, see this was in the center and to move it to the right we moved it by 250 units and now I want it to move from right hand to left hand means what is the value I have to apply to move it to right if I had added 250 to move it to left I have to add minus 250 ok. So, here I will come to end and I will add minus 250 I will press enter. So, our transition is ready only thing is we have to apply this transition to whom this transition has to be applied I will come over here the collider is selected I will click on the position tab here the collider is uh, the collider uh, position is now controlled through the code I will drag this transition and connect to collider. Now see what happened is I have not started the game at all I have not tapped it but immediately you see the collider has started to move. Why is it moving? Why is that as soon as I connect it started moving? Because this entire logic that we have created has no trigger at all. See as soon as you connect it it starts because it is always enabled. Now to make it work only when I tap I have to connect this loop animation to this place switch or boolean here. So, once I connect it now what happens is only when I click it will move and when I click it stops when I click it moves when I click it stops. So, this connection will may give you the control to control the animation through tap. So, now you are understanding the concept slowly I think. Now, one more thing that we need to do here is only thing is now what is happening is when it is getting animated you are seeing the same component that is the same obstacle is coming again and again. However, in the game what I have to do is one time you should get the candy, one time you have to get the broken can, one time you have to get the dustbin. How are you going to do that because we have created an animation sequence with three components ok. Now, you are seeing only one. So, the thing is if you remember if you come to your uh, asset and if you select this any collider we had set its FPS at 0 and this was moving based on the first frame ok on the current frame value. Now, this current frame has to be now controlled in such a way so that every time it comes it should come with a different uh, frame. So, for this what I can do is in the loop animation this current frame should be connected to the loop animation because every time the animation loops the frame should change. So, for this what I am going to do is I will select this loop animation here. I will select the any collider here, I will select the current frame here and I will bring this current frame and I will connect this 
second looped to this any collider. See, I will just connect it. So, when I am trying to connect it, it is showing red because I cannot directly connect this because the problem is you cannot give anti collide you have this is called as the variable type error type error means this collider is actually an integer it needs an integer number but the loop animation is giving it a boolean true or false so that's why when you try to connect it directly it's not getting connected so how to control this so before this what i will do is I have to control this into a number. I have to generate a number and I need a number generator which is going to generate a number and this number how it should be generated is it should be random means you should not have the same pattern of obstacle coming. Every time it should not be candy can dustbin or candy dustbin uh, can it should change and for this we have one option mathematical option which we use very popularly in no game is built without this mathematical operator and this mathematical operator we call it as random random means if you give one minimum value and maximum value the random value will be calculated by the computer so for this i am going to come to add patch and i am going to add random I will select random and I will click add patch. So, now you have the random patch added here and this random patch see it gets connected to this loop animation. So, I have connected this to loop animation and here in random you have one start range and end range and I will select this value and I will connect it to this collider frame number. But now what is happening is this random is generating number like see here 0 0.7, 0 0.5, 0 0.1. The problem is this random I will just disconnect it, I will leave it is generating number like 0, 0 0.1, 0 0.35, 0. Point, like this all decimal places between 0 and 1. But I want frame number cannot be decimal places you does not have a 0 0.6 frame frame number should be a round number. So, for this I will just drag here and add one more component called as round this is also a mathematical operator when I add this operator now what happens whatever number it is generating it gets converted into a round number and now you can see it is changing between two frames now one time you are getting the can sometimes you get only the candy and sometimes you get the can it is randomly switching the number between 0 and 1 you can see here here you can see the number how it is switching between randomly between 0 and 1 but here we have three values so that is why if I come to random here window here and if I set the end range to 2 now see what happens is you have all the three appearing now because the values now change between 1, 2, 0, 1 and 2. So, you are seeing all the three randomly appearing. So, you can now understand the logic how we randomly created the obstacles. We created the random obstacle by creating an animation sequence and for that animation sequence we are controlling the frame using a random number generated by the computer. So, we have this working fine. Now, the only thing is once this is generated the second part here is you are seeing the animation you may ask me can I control its speed? Yes, you can control the speed how is it? You have one in loop you have one duration option it is set to 1 whatever animation you set it will take one second now if i change this value to 3 and press enter you can now see it is moving slow can you see this it is moving damn slow can you see oh sorry this has set to 30 i will set it to 3 so when, oh, one second. so i have set it to 3 see now the animation became slower so if i make it 
5, 6, it makes still slow. See, it is moving so slow. Okay. So, in this way, by changing this value, I will reset it. I will again start the game and you can see the animation is running so slow. Okay. You can control the speed of the collider coming using this duration here and I will set this back to 1 now, so that it is moving at the same speed. So, now we have created one animation of uh, the uh, distinct background and another animation of the collider. Now, we are left with the animation of our player. The player has to jump when the obstacle comes and this we shall do it in our next session. Now, one last thing I forgot is I have to come to file and choose save because if you does not save this the thing is it is a very important step that you should uh, remember you may lose your work. So, I have saved it now. So, after saving it now in our next session we are that is the fifth session on this uh, blinking project we are going to explore how we can control the player. The player is going to jump and his animation is triggered not by tapping the phone, but by blinking your eye. So, how to do it? We will explore it in our next session. Thank you.